announce the support as a channel member, Richard Myers. Right, we really are playing our first European game at home at Stamford Bridge in this video. So we're finally going to find out just how big our fan base is. Hello and welcome to part 134 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a Champions League game at home to Anderlecht and a Premier League game against Brentford since you were last with me. Um, we've done okay apart from when we played reigning Premier League champions Newcastle away and we narrowly lost 1-0. Other than that, we are in very solid form. We beat Chelsea away from home in the Champions League. So we have already won a Champions League game at Stamford Bridge. Worth noting, when Chelsea were the home team, nearly 42,000 people there. It will be interesting to see how many turn up for us versus Anderlecht. It's the closest home game we've had to Wembley in, what, 10 years since we left Vale Farm? I think it's probably 10 years. Uh, the Premier League table looks like this. We're still hovering in those European qualification spots, which is exactly where we want to be. The Champions League table looks like this. A win against Anderlecht, and we are still in that top eight where we want to be because it's worth lots of money and gets us deep into the knockout rounds if we get there. And this is the team for our first ever home game in front of more than 6,000 people, presumably. It's Bezrik in goal, a back four of Ungesen, Muleman's, Agume and Vaughan, Fanimo and Christodoulou in midfield, Reno, Ansong and Paranos behind Belkacemi up front. Let's get this team onto the pitch at Stamford Bridge and we're going to immediately have a look to see uh, how many people have turned up. It looks pretty full to me, boys and girls. Goodness me, look at that. There's loads of people here. Get the match stats on. How many people have turned up? I can't even see it. Uh, where's the match stats? It's up here somewhere, isn't it? Um, can we have a... There. There it is. Match stats. That's not much help. Ah, we need to look really quickly. 23, I think that is. 25,000, which is roughly how many people we're going to fit into our new stadium. So if it is 25,000... That means they've got the size of the new stadium absolutely spot on, which will be quite impressive if they've managed to judge that with absolutely no evidence to base it on. Um, in other news, we'll check in on that in a second in between highlights. In other news, uh, Tom Best has been offered three managers' jobs since the last episode and turned them all down. He is still our assistant manager. He, I think he knows he's next in line. I've signed a new five-year contract here on £35,000 a week. That's nearly £2 million a year. I'm set for life at the end of that contract. I'm 61 at the end of that contract. No, I'm 61 now. I'll be 66 at the end of that contract. £10 million richer. I'm done at that point. Five years' time. At the, at the longest, Tom Best takes over as manager, if I have my say. And I should, because I'll have been here like, 25, 30 years at that point. Goodness me, should I get my say? Right, here we go. We can actually have a proper look. Uh, yeah, 25,000, which is pretty much to the to the person how many seats we're going to have in the new stadium. So as long as they've given us some expansion capacity, it sounds like they're pitching the new ground exactly right. And as long as it can expand up to this sort of size... I think it probably sorts us out forever. And Song with a great opportunity, but it ends up coming back off the post, I think. We are knocking on the door. We should be a better team than Anderlecht. Some of the performances we've put in in the Champions League so far this season, we are a very, very good side. We should be beating Anderlecht at home, that's for sure. And it's going to be Christodoulou trying one of his long throws. These are new this season, but they're quite effective. He actually finds his man. I'd like everyone we've ever used long throws with in the past. Christodoulou can actually find a Wembley player with them, which is, it's frankly remarkable. Um, have we managed to stay on side though to put us 1-0 up in the Champions League? We have lovely old stuff. Look, it, I mean, it's a long throw that finds the man. That's so rare. It's a wonderful skill that he's picked up and Renault there at the far post to nod it past the keeper and that should firm up our top eight spot as it stands at the moment. Paranos goes past his man with ease after being instrumental in the goal that we've scored already. He's turned that guy inside and out, finds Renault again, a little bit long, couldn't get proper contact, but he's back with Renault, tries to get the shot away, goes behind for a corner and we are a proper threat from these set pieces these days. Less so from this side. We're better with the in-swinger from the right-hand side, um, but I mean... We did all right there. We sort of found Fanimo. We couldn't get proper contact. He's definitely the guy we aim for. Despite the fact that he's the shortest of our defenders, 
Um, at only six foot two, he has the best jumping reach. And as you all know, height doesn't really count for anything. It's all about jumping reach. I think Fanamo's jumping reach is 18. So there's not many people in the footballing world who can jump much higher than Fanamo, which is why he's so effective at the set pieces. Paranos then on the right, he's had a very good game so far. And Song trying to get some contact but can't own guessing he's done that on his weak foot. I tell you what, he's going under the radar is a very impressive signing for us. Yeah, we spent a lot of money on him. Nine million, I think he's our third most expensive player ever behind Agume and the uh, the Belgian guy, Lambert, who hasn't broken into the team yet. So, I mean, it's not like he was a bargain. He should be playing well, but he is playing well, and that's good. And Renault has his second of the game. We're appealing, or they're appealing for offside again. That looked less offside than the first one. I guess it's the guy who nods it back who potentially could have been offside. The referee is checking, and that one has been disallowed. We'll have a look at the replay. I think it's when the ball first comes in. Um, yeah, it's in fact, who is it who's on who's offside? I don't think it is Balcasemi. I think it's I think it was Ungessen who was offside in the middle, which is a little bit harsh because he never got anywhere near the ball. And now Reno, after being the biggest goal threat of the game so far, he wasn't fully fit going in. Hermoso is gonna come on for him. Um, I mean Hermoso has been pretty impressive this season as well, so it's not a particular downgrade to bring him on. Looking at those match stats we should be more than one goal ahead. And it's a little bit alarming that we're not because it does leave the door open for Anderlecht to sneak an equaliser. Um, Chris Tadoulou with the long throw again, once again, finds his man. And it's now with Hermoso, Chris Tadoulou to Ungessen. This is some lovely football. Fanimo with the shot from the edge of the area, whistles past the base of the post. Probably not the guy you wanted shooting from there, but we did work the ball nicely to him. So it seemed like it was part of the plan. And Song playing it into Balcasemi. Uh, Belka semi who's still only got the one goal for us but it's a lovely corner so gets to continue in the team and Hermoso got a little bit carried away I think he thought he'd already scored so he just hit it really hard to try and explode the net and look fancy it was an open goal he should have done better than that and it is Hermoso from deep trying to make up for it but gives the ball away now this isn't quite the same level of substitute appearance he's had in some of the recent episodes but Belka semi wins the ball back there Goes past his man, shoots from range. He finally does have his second goal for the club. And it's a very good one. And that should secure us the three points, which, as you can see from the league table, puts us level on points with Real Madrid at the top of the Champions League. Which is, you know, we are the two, we are the two best teams in Champions League history, us and Real Madrid, clearly. But, I mean, based on win ratio, find me a team with a better Champions League win ratio than Wembley. We're top of the Champions League. Moulemans couldn't get proper contact. How many times is that happening today? We're getting into good positions and we're just not making contact with our headers. Considering we are a bunch of big boys, we should be doing a little bit better area. I think we need to do some heading training. Agume plays it across to Moulemans and now Fanimo out to Ungessen and now Hermoso with the cross looking for Balka Chemi, Balka Kem. I need the comment section to tell me how to say his name. I imagine you already have by now, but I'm recording these episodes a little bit in advance because um, I went to Alton Towers yesterday, so I wasn't able to record the video. I mean, I'm recording this before I went. I assume I had a nice day. I probably won't let you know. There'll probably be a video on the vlog channel. If you want to know if I had a nice day, go watch the vlog channel. Yes, that's still a thing. I just don't vlog every day anymore, but that video will be on there. We had to see what I got up to at Oktoberfest at Alton Towers. I mean, what more could you possibly want? The link might be in the description. It probably isn't. Um, you'll be able to find it if you can figure out what my name is. You should know my name by now. Uh, right, Anson is going to come off for Lambert. Um, we'll take off Muhlemans and bring on Brewers. We want Brewers to have a good game in front of you lot. So let's get him on. And hopefully he doesn't realise you're there. And uh, we, we might be okay. Uh, Paranos, who was very, very lively in the first half, has quieted down a little bit in the second half but creating a chance for us again there. And it's back with Fanimo. Remember when he was a centre-back? It was like so long ago. He's such a good anchor man in midfield. It's definitely his role now. Um, and we've got ourselves another corner and we are definitely going to be aiming at Fanimo. There he is, look, into the near post and Fanimo does make contact, but can't keep his header down. It goes over the crossbar. And now we've got a free kick from the edge of the area. And I think that's Lambert who's going to be taking Lambert, by the way. Still only started one game for us, or two games, I think. I think we started him in the last league game. But has won Premier League Young Player of the Month just with his performances coming off the bench. We have promised him more game time, so Ansong is going to sit out for some league matches for a bit. 
so that we can give Lambert a little bit more game time. He's ready. We just don't have space for him and Ansong, and they're two of our best players. So I guess it's a nice problem to have, isn't it? Uh, right, we will bring Cottam on in midfield. And for my final trick, we'll take off Fanimo and I want to get Paolo Roberto on. We've already seen Di Salvo have a little bit of game time in a previous video. This is Paolo Roberto's debut for us. Um, so he's going to come on and have 10 minutes of Champions League football as well with us comfortably ahead. I think we can try out the youngsters and give them the opportunity to, uh, to you know, do a little bit of football. Show us what they've got. There's no point in being in the Champions League squad if we're not going to give them game time. They're probably dropping out of the Champions League squad once we get to January to let two of the guys who we've promised to register back in again. Probably the two backup fullbacks will come in for those two. So we'll use them as we as and when we can in this first half of the season. And then when we have to bring the other guys in, they can drop out. And because they're only breakthrough prospects, they shouldn't be too upset about it. There is Paolo Roberto and he's scored on his debut. I mean. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Did he stay onside? I mean, I think he did. I certainly don't think he was offside. There might have been someone around him who was, but it would be very harsh to dis... That is very harsh to disallow it. It's a debut goal for a youngster who scored directly from a corner or from the header from the corner. Yeah, Paranos is in the way of the keeper, but still seems a little harsh. He never touched the ball. Yes, he was interfering with play by blocking the keeper's view, but back in my day, that goal's not getting disallowed for offside because... The guy who's done the header has done nothing wrong. Seems harsh, but it's another three points for us. Um, we are surely at the point now where we're just about guaranteed qualification for the next stage in the Champions League. We're aiming for nine points. We've already got 13 with three games to play. We have got a tough, a tough game coming up. We should beat Neck, um, but away against PSG will be tough. Home against Borussia Dortmund will be tough. Um, but I think we can probably get through a bunch of football matches now and probably come back for the PSG game in the next episode. Obviously, we're going to play Brentford first, but we've played, done a lot of episodes in the first half of this season, so we'll get some games played after Brentford. So a couple of changes for Brentford. We probably are going to need to get better at rotation as the season goes on, but at the moment, we're getting away with it. Lambert does come in for Ansong, though, because we've promised him more game time and Hermoso coming in on the left-hand side at the expense of Renault, who picked up another injury in that game. It was ankle ligaments and he's going to be out for another week or so. So Hermoso getting himself another start. Brentford, similar to us, comfortably mid-table. They're just at the bottom end of comfortably mid-table, whereas we're at the top end. <coughs> we're at the top end, he says, trying not to have a coughing fit. I've, I've wet the whistle a little bit. The match has kicked off. You didn't miss anything. Um, but Lambert is in here. Plays it back to Hermoso in the two boys who didn't start in Europe. Combining. Maybe we do need to be rotating a little bit more because they're the freshest players we've got. And they've uh, they've come in and looked the most likely to score in the opening two minutes. Which, I mean, you'd, it's not all about scoring in the opening two minutes. But it would have been nice for us to open the scoring. Uh, Brentford have opened the scoring. That's less nice. Um, it's the it's the come down of being back at the Gavin Rose Stadium after playing at Stamford Bridge. Our highest ever home attendance, just over twenty five thousand. We made seven hundred and fifty thousand pounds in gate receipts from that game, which is again a little bit of a clue as to where we might be gates receipts wise uh, when we're in the new ground. So it's another huge chunk of of revenue that's going to certainly help us going forward, but being back playing in front of 6,000 people again is not fun. I really think the board should be looking for a, an alternative stadium for us to play our league games in for the rest of this season and the whole of next season while we wait for the new ground. Playing at this one is absurd. Um, we're going to go attack him and we're going to demand more. We can't be losing a match against Brentford. I mean, I know Champions League hangover is a real thing. We've suffered from it many times before, but we've not really suffered from it yet this season. Balkachemi is in here and can't keep it down. I think the keeper's made the save there, which does open up the possibility for us to score from a corner. We do love to score from a corner. On the topic of Lambert, by the way, who's taking the corner, he was on the little shortlist of four or five names rumoured with potentially winning European Golden Boy. So we have got a very, very highly rated youngster in the shape of Lambert. Another reason to give him a little bit of a run in the team. It is a little bit of a shame for Ansong, who has done nothing wrong since coming in. But there's just, there's no obvious way to play the two of them at 
the same time, neither of them can play the defensive midfield role. Um, I mean, I guess we could train one of them to try and play the Segundo Volante role that Krista Dulu plays. So he's got a really high quality backup. Set. In fact, that's probably the logical thing to do. But neither of them can play up front. Neither of them can play out wide. We only use one attacker midfielder. So unless, I mean, I guess the sensible thing is train them both to do Segundo Volante. And then we've got other other high quality players who can do that. It might lead to Krista Dulu losing his space eventually, which would be a little bit, a little bit of a shame. Although he is now a regular for the England under 21. So after being let go by Arsenal at 17 years old, he has uh, forced his way back to England under 21 level. And it would be very nice to see him one day go on and become a full England international. Um, Paranos has picked up a knock there. Uh, Williams is going to come on for him. And we're going to go in at half time 1 0 down, which is a little bit out of character. You've seen how well we've been playing lately. Um, we're going to immediate, immediately demand more at the start of this second half. And I think we might be experiencing our first ever proper Champions League hangover. I'd need to look back at the schedule. I feel like a lot of the time, because there's so many Premier League teams who are in Europe, this might be the first time we've come off the back of a European game and played against a team not in Europe which is what I'm going to use as my excuse. They're, they've gone into this fresher than we are. And I even said going in, I need to get I need to get on top of player rotation. If you've watched my older series, is, is, and I imagine most of you have, you'll know it's my big weakness. A squad rotation, I'm rubbish at it. Even when we've got multiple good players for each position, like we have in this squad, I just don't rotate enough and it leads to problems like this. Um, right, we'll bring Kibwana on. Um, Hermoso is not playing very well. Pep's not on the bench, which seems like an oversight. Um, we'll bring on Musa up front. And he hasn't had an opportunity for a little while. So he gets 20 minutes here to try and be the hero and grab the equaliser while we demand more. Lambert is tired. So Lambert can come off for Ansong. And for my final change, Krista Dulu comes off. And Cotton comes on to play there. We're going to go very attacking. With 15 minutes to go, mainly because I want two goals. It's not going to be enough just to equalise. I want to win this football match. Uh, Musat hovering outside of the area for the corner is interesting for the striker. Um, I'm guessing trying to get the ball back into the area again. Kebwana plays it back to Agume, who's made it all the way back to get back into position. There are still plenty of red shirts forward, though. Um, and Vaughan is trying to get himself into a crossing position. Cuts it back to Cotton. Cotton. Inside to Williams, and it's a good effort from Williams, but it's saved by the Brentford keeper. Does lead to another corner for us, though, and it's going to be Hermoso to float one into that near post again. He's just not got the same delivery that uh, that we get from Belkasemi, um, which is a little bit of a shame because we're now getting a nice run of corners, and it's going to be Hermoso looking for Agume at the near post again. Can't find him. It comes back to Nguessen, and now Cotton. I massively overhit that. That's just really poor from him. Um, we're going to... Do we berate? I think we berate. I think we're better than this now. We've got one more corner before the beration. We don't even beat the first man. We've got to be got to have better set-piece delivery than that. Williams has done really well here, though, and drives into the area, plays it across goal, and Moussat's there to tap it home, and he has come on and made himself a hero again. He's becoming a cult hero. He's not going to be the 20-goal-a-season striker, but he might be our Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's going to be our super sub because almost all of the goals he's scored, what an absurd piece of football from Williams, but almost all the goals Musa has scored have been off the bench. Whenever he starts, he really disappoints. But coming off the bench, he is a threat. Vaughan, with the with the free kick, we, we are rampant now. We're going for the jugular. We want this win over Brentford. Musa plays it into Cotton. Across to Ansong, his looping header. Can't keep it down below the, uh, below the crossbar. And we're still hunting for the goal that would be the winning goal. And it's Brentford back with their goalkeeper, hopefully about to give the ball away. Because if they're going to start a highlight from here, they're going to score. That's how football manager works. We need to win the ball off of them. And we do have the ball back off of them. It's Kibwana forward to Hermoso. Hermoso back to Kibwana again. Cotton to Williams. In acres of space, shoots and scores an absolute worldie. I tell you what. He's come off the bench and been absolutely brilliant. He made the first, scored the second, and we have turned this on its head. And this is the kind of performance you need to be able to do if you're a good team. We've not played massively well, but we should be coming away with three points. 
And we've used our bench and our fringe players to do it. And Williams, single-handedly, has, I think, dragged us to victory here. We've dropped back down to our positive mentality again. It worries me that we're starting straight up with a Brentford highlight. So they could be going up the other end to equalise immediately. Cotton has been good since coming on. And um, Agume plays it forward, looking for the run of Moussak. Can't find him. But Cotton's there again to stop the uh, counter-attack. And now Ansong, who, of course, is fresh onto the pitch, having come on for Lambert, um, but doesn't find the pass there but I'm guessing is there to in intercept we're looking for a third and song plays it into Musat. Musat's there again but his shot is straight at the keeper he was offside anyway and with three minutes of additional time to go that should be that we don't need any more highlights from here please and thank you this is plenty and we do get the three points that that's a good sign what we've done there let's have a look at what that does to the league table uh, that puts us up into fourth place, a traditional Champions League qualification spot. We're not in a title race, but we are a good, good team. And now we are going to play a bunch of matches. And the next time you see us, we'll be on our way to Paris. See the Eiffel Tower? Won't that be nice? We'll also have some money to spend, hopefully, in January because our bank balance is ever increasing. So at some point in the next couple of weeks, I'll be going cap in hand to the board asking for some January spendsies. But if you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.